Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. Welcome back to another session. This is part 3, grade 6, CBSC, chapter 5. And the name of the chapter is Kingdoms, Kings and an Early Republic. So in the last classes, we covered all these topics. Today we are going to talk of this and some extra bit of information that I want you guys to know. Now in the book, they've named a number of kings who ruled the during the Magdan Empire, during the Magd rule. So different set of people were there and also this empire, Magda Empire, it is mentioned in, this is some extra bit of information, those who want to study, please stay tuned. They, they are also, this empire is also mentioned in Ramayana and Mahabharata. Right? So this Magda Empire, it had three dynasties. I'm going to write it here. It had three dynasties. In those dynasties, you generally have kings. So empire, then comes the dynasty, then comes the kings. So the first one is Haryanka. H-A-R-Y-A-N. Haryanka dynasty. Then after that, the second ones, they were known as Shishunagas. And the third one are Nandas. So I'm going to talk of Nandas because it's very, very important during the time of Nandas. It's Alexander who attacked. Now in this Haryankas, as I told you, the dynasties have kings in it. So in this Haryanka, the first king is Bimbisara. Then the second one is his son Ajat. Shatru and the third one is Uddin. Easy? Now we are going to talk of, of course I am going to talk of the important capitals also. During Haryanka period, this one, let me write it here. Magd Empire had two basic important capitals. The first one is Partliputra. And the second one is Rajgriha or Rajgir, what we call it. Okay. So it was during this time, Uddain's time, that there was a foundation stone laid and to Patliputra and the kingdom was moved. It was shifted from Rajgriha to Patliputra. Right? And also, now we are going to move on to the second part, that is Shishunagas. Now this Shishunagas, the first important ruler was Shishunaga and he was succeeded after Shishunaga. He's, the name of the king has been named after, the dynasty has been named after the name of the king. And the second one was Kala Shoka. Right. Now I'm going to talk of Nandas. Now these Nandas, after Shishu Nandas, we've got the Nandas. The first important Nanda is Mahapadman. He's the founder of Nanda dynasty. He's also known to be the Ekar of the sole monarch. In fact, You'll be surprised to know he is identified as the first empire builder in the Indian history. All this information is not given in your book. It's just to have an idea so that, you know, you don't get confused. So I'm going to write it here for you, Nandas. The first one is Mahapadmananda, who's also known as Ekarat, which means the soul monarch the only king in Puranas. So after Mahapadmananda, there were a lot of kings, but of course we are going to straight away move on to one of the most important ones, Dhananand. And he was the one, at his time, 
first thing happened was alexander attack i'll talk about it in the later session alexander attack invaded india so he has been referred by different names in greek texts and the second thought is during dhananand's time it was when chandragupta maurya yes after this maurya time period starts it is chandragupta maurya who overthrew dhananand and set up maurya empire so after magdha you have maurya dynasty right so now let's talk about it revise it i told you first of all you have an empire which is which consist of a lot of states that are ruled by different kings then after that we talked of dynasties where were three dynasties so dynasty basically means a hereditary rule a bloodline that's dynasties so we've got in this mug the empire we've got three influential dynasties first is aryanka we've got three kings shishunagas i talked of two kings first shishunaga itself second kalasoka then uh, nandas i talked of two important kings there first is mahapadmanand and the second one is tanana and then after this we've got the maurin time period chandragupta maurya and all so we'll talk about that him also let's get started with the very first topic from the book that we are supposed to cover in today's session that is math right so magdha it became a very very important kingdom it's a very very important kingdom and i show you where it exactly it is it was ruled by a different form of government i'll show you magdha empire right here can you see this magdha empire slowly and steadily it's expanding expanding and expanding so this is magdha empire so there's a location that's called vaji very near to bihar so this place vaji it had its capital at vishali that's bihar so i'm first going to focus on magdha and then i'm going to talk of vaji also right with its capital bihar you don't apply those shortcuts in your exams by the way theek okay. hai so in the last class guys if you remember we talked of a lot of mahajanpats a king ruling an area with set of people and also having a capital that was fortified if you remember that so this magdha empire these uh it, it had a lot of mahajanpats but the most important mahajanpats came around 200 years ago and magdha empire started to have all of them in the very recent past so this is basically located where ganga river flows this is ganga river and also son river one of its tributaries so ganga and flow uh, ganga and son flowed through this area that's called magdha empire so if you have two important you can see it here also this one most of the time i'll show you these areas also this is magdha area somewhat here you've got partly put through here so as i was telling you the magdha empire became one of the most important centers for mahajanpats why it became very very important because there were two important rivers flowing through this area one is ganga and the second one is son so what all did they offer they offered good water supply they offered good transportation and also they made the land very very fertile so of course people could live and live in this part even to train because this is densely forested area back then in up bihar we've got den we've got dense forest so what people used to do is people used to get elephants from this area i'll try to help you with those elephants 
if I can. So they used to have all those elephants from the forest. They used to get those elephants from the forest, though it does not look like. But just consider it. So they used to get those elephants. They used to train them, provide them food. And make them serve in the army. See how this system evolved from Mahajanpads. You've got people living very close to the river. Training of the elephant is done. Forest is there. So of course you can use from the forest. You can use the wood to construct the houses. To, to be used in the army. To make weapons out of it. Plus in the last class we remember changes taking place. And uh, agricultural, start, agricultural farmers started to make use of iron. So that means iron was to be found here. Iron ore mines were found and definitely they started to capture the potential of iron. Started to make tools. Started to get weapons out of it. And in your book we've got two important kings named in this empire. The first one is Bimbisara. Here. And the second person named is Ajat Shatru. Which means they, they were quite popular. Then there was Mahapadmananda from the rulers, Nanda's side. Then I've already talked of their capital, Rajgriha. This capital is in present day Bihar. So this was initially the capital. Then I told you they moved to this Patliputra. Initially, it was RP, remember. First capital, I told you till the time of Uddain, it was Rajgriha. And then they moved to Patliputra during Uddain's time period, during his rule. Then I also told you during the time of Nandas, Dhananda around 2300 years ago, there's a person who's called Alexander. Yeah, yeah, from Greek. Exactly, you got it. Are you talking of the same Alexander that we've read? Yes. So this Alexander came with his army and he wanted to become a world conqueror. He wanted to conquer the world. Right? So there's a country, Macedonia, somewhere in the Greece. He came from the uh, Greece part. And he wanted to, he carried his, all his men here. He came to India and he wanted to control India. He controlled most part of Egypt. He, he managed to control most part of West Asia and was looking forward to control uh, Asia, India also. So when he came, he stopped at the banks of Beas River, somewhere here. He stopped there because his soldiers refused to move forward and they said, Oh God, uh, Alexander, we are so scared. We've heard that these kings in India they're very strong. They have armies. They have trained armies. They make use of elephants. Especially Nandas. We've heard they've got elephants. They've got foot soldiers. They've also used chariots. Right? And the last thing I want to tell you is about Vanji. As I told you in other place. Magda became important kingdom. So, Vanji was also under a different set of government whom we call as Ghana or Sangha, which means group of people, right? So, I'll talk about it in the next class. I don't think we'll be in a position to cover it in this class. So, I'll talk about Vanji in detail in the next class. In case you like the session, please don't forget to hit subscribe and share the video. Thank you.